Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Leslie presents. And now your host, Paul Leslie. It's time for our special guest section of the show. Everybody loves Tall Paul. Here he is, Paul Bobal, better known as Tall Paul. He is my all. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Paul. It's my pleasure, man. Good to be here. The variety of music you play is astounding. I, I know last night I was enjoying the concert, and one minute you were playing Peter Gabriel, and the next minute you're playing Jimmy Buffett, and then you're playing your own music. How did this all come about? I started out playing the songs that I like originally, and... Um, my my musical collection, my CD collection at home is as diverse as anything that I know. I listen to jazz and bluegrass and rock and pop and you know, short of rap, I think everything else. <laughs> and back in the day, uh, you opened for Jimmy Buffett. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, the first time I opened for Buffett was when I was in college, and um, I'd never seen him live. I was a fan, you know, I'd listened to Come Monday on the radio and loved all the songs, and then I saw him, and, and it was a an experience. It was just amazing. And uh, then I got to open for him again on this recent tour in Nashville. And you've kind of gotten yourself in a whirlwind with all this, the parrot head world. You were a player with Saint Somewhere. Right. How'd you get caught in this madness? Well, um, I think that um, as the, as the parrot head lifestyle has, has evolved and grown, um, all those people have just they're a great audience. They they got and support live music, and having played in so many places and uh, being a part of the band Saint Somewhere was really influential and in, in, in meeting people. And those people are so supportive. I mean, Parrotheads are an amazing group of folks, and if they if they like what you do, they'll come out and see you and and uh, spread the word. It's it's a wonderful group of people to play for. And on your uh, latest album, Fast Beneath My Feet, you did a song called High Wire. And tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind that song. Um, people always always tell you what you should do, you know, and and sometimes what you should do is is, is you know, it's what other people think. And high wire, the idea is that there's something that you want to do so bad, and and you don't have any other choice. It's it's you know, it's almost like destiny. You're going to do this, and people tell you that it's not necessarily the right thing to do, and and you have no choice. You do it, and you're out there, you know, and you're you're just kind of rolling along and, and you don't even think about the fact that it's you know maybe not the the smartest thing and ideally you know you, you're doing it because you love it and that's uh, you, the, the line is there you just you keep 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 steady and don't look down you know you just keep going and what inspires you when you're writing these songs you you write about so many different things and you really don't stick to any particular genre you just I guess play whatever you feel what right. what inspires tall Paul that's that's a tough one, you know, because sometimes um, I spent some time in Ireland and I came back and one morning I woke up and there was this really wonderful Irish fiddle tune in my head and, and you know, you get inspired by by the places that you go and the people that you meet and your life experiences, you know, and, and you see people that are going through a hard time emotionally and, and you get sort of that in your mind and you write a song about that. Um, being in another place, um, traveling different parts of the country or even the world, you get exposed to different kinds of music. Um, I love listening to, to bluegrass music, and it's not the most popular form of music, but I like rock music, you know, and, and all these influences. You know, you hear, you hear reggae, and you hear, you hear um, Brazilian music and these wonderful rhythms. And sometimes you, you immerse yourself in other people's music, and it becomes a part of you. you. You can't help but want to incorporate those things into what you do. So the inspirations are as varied as your life experience. One of your songs, Left Behind, has uh, meant a lot to some people that have lost their fathers and mothers in the 9-11 incident. Right. Um, tell us a little bit about that song. Um, I lost my dad um, several years ago, and a few months later, a real good friend of mine lost his dad. And You know, we'd see each other out and, and make eye contact and you know, like on Father's Day or on one of our dad's birthday, we'd, we'd kind of see each other. And, and uh, there was that special bond that we'd been through something that was really difficult to deal with. And at some point, he and I started writing a song about losing our dads, specifically our dads. And the song became a little more general about losing someone that you really care about. 
And it's obviously from a son's standpoint, you know, as opposed to a daughter. But the idea of losing someone and not necessarily getting to say everything you wanted to say to that person because it happens kind of suddenly. And then when 9-11 happened, a lot of people responded and um, because there was so much tragedy and so much loss unexpectedly. And it touched a lot of people. And, and we, um, we sold a, a version of that song with all the proceeds going to victims of that tragedy. And we put the song online as a free download and just hopefully it would help people, you know, to deal with some of that loss. Certainly is a touching song. Well, thank you. Thank you. I've talked to a lot of people in Tennessee and a couple of people that are UT students, <laughs> and they tell me that the first thing you do when you're a freshman is you go see Tall Paul play. What's it like watching these kids come in as freshmen and, and you see them all the time, all the way through graduation, and making Tall Paul a part of the college experience, a tradition for them? I think one of the biggest compliments that, that I've gotten is someone telling me that their favorite memory of being in college was coming to see me play. Think of all the things that happened to you in college, how your life changes and how you grow and all the things that you experience. And for someone to say that one of their best experiences or best memories was coming to see me play, literally, they'll, they'll bring in freshmen that are coming in for orientation. And they'll bring them out to see me play. And they say, this is what we do on Monday night. <laughs> you know, and they're incoming freshmen. And they're probably underage, you know. And, <laughs> and you know, when you, when you get that sort of support, it's, it's really neat. And you see them as freshmen and you see them growing and doing, you know, you see them a lot as a freshman. Then ideally you see them a little less when they actually start studying more. And, and then they'll show up right at graduation. And, you know, the irony is that, that a couple of years down the road they'll, they'll call me or email me and say, you know, we, we met at one of your shows and my wife and I or you know, my girlfriend and I are getting married. Would you play at our wedding or could we use your song, that, you know, with a special song in our ceremony? So I've become a, a part of a lot of people's lives in a lot more than just drinking in a bar. You know, it's, it's, it's really neat. I heard it said that you're uh, live at the library album, that if the fire marshal had been there that night, <laughs> or out of all the people that you have said were there that night, that there's no way they wouldn't have been fined. The place that I played um, for years and years in Knoxville was called the library, and it, it would probably comfortably hold maybe four or 500 people. And I know that there were nights that over the course of the evening, over 1,000 people would come in and out. And on the night, I mean, I had told people that I was going to record. So everybody came in. They wanted to be, you know, their screams, they wanted to be heard on the, on the, on the tape. But even at that, everybody says, oh, I was there. I was there. <laughs> and I just can't imagine all those people actually having been there. But it was, a, it was a great night, and the recording is a really neat live recording because it captured all that. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans out there? I, you know, I've tried playing at home, you know, and, and having fun in the living room, and it's not nearly as much fun as going out and playing for people. When you've got people out there responding and singing along and you see the smiling faces and realizing that you're touching people, and I guess my favorite thing to say would be just thanks for letting me do something that I love so much. And, and reacting and responding and being there and being supportive. You know, it's, it's what makes it work. And thank you for the music, Tall Paul. My pleasure. You are the man. <laughs> for more information on Tall Paul, check out www.tallpaul.com. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. <laughs>